Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Shane. We're back at it. I got a special guest here today. <laughs> my boy Danny. Hello, um, guys. <laughs> I actually uh, made a video about him. Uh, two two different videos. One where he saved my ass when I tried to take on the whole Swansea police force, <laughs> and then the other one where uh, he decided to give his car away. So, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen them videos, go check it out. But uh, what I wanted to talk about with him is um, how he got into his addiction, like where did, where it all started, and uh, we're just gonna play it by ear. I mean, I'm gonna ask him a couple questions, and, and we're just gonna let this this conversation go. So let's start it off. So uh, well, where I got started off? Yeah. So yeah, let's let's talk about know. that. And um, right oh, I uh, was kind of young, I mean, I kind of just went from smoking pot to. Uh, Straight to the needle, pretty much. Yeah, I didn't really I, do much of anything before I got started on that. It's crazy. I, that's the same thing that I did, man. No, I, I blame that on dare class. Lying to us about all sorts of shit. I mean, it's not like you smoke pot, you're going to go nuts. Or if you drink, you're going to be an alcoholic. I yeah, thought it was just grown-ups telling us not to have fun. That's you know? so true, man. That's so true. <laughs> so, uh, you know, when you first start getting high, you don't see people sick. You don't see people, you know, uh, asked out. I just seen everybody having fun. Yeah. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Start having fun, start dabbling, and the next thing you know, it's got you by the balls. Yeah. And yeah. it starts dragging you through the friggin', uh, through the mud. <laughs> yeah, it definitely you know? does, man. I remember a couple instances where, like, um, where we, we first started, like, um, I mean, because that wasn't my drug of choice at first. I was into the coke. You wouldn't even do it at first. It, you yeah. Doing it, you wouldn't even touch it. Exactly. And um, I'm surprised you remember that because we were at my house, at my mother's house when I was living in Swansea. And um, I just got done doing some coke, and you and Shawnee were like, uh, you had some shit. I guess you 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 guys, we all took a ride to Somerset to grab it. Yeah. And um, we ended up coming back, and uh, I didn't know what you got. And then we got back, you, and you and him was st were like, yeah, let's go get let's go get high. And at first I was like, nah, 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 I'm all set. And then I watched how everything got you guys all fucked up and I'm still sitting in the corner all geeked out like I think I want to fucking be like where they're at yeah that was the situation for, for, for a lot of times before you uh before you did it because it was a lot of times that we did that before I even got high and it was just from seeing Shawnee having fun I was like oh this isn't that bad don't yeah. seem that bad yeah. and then uh got bad pretty fast yeah yeah it <laughs> you know? does it, listen it, if it, it starts out innocent you know what I mean it starts out with with thinking that it's okay to uh, ultimately not being able to control it, you know? I got rid of all my social anxieties and everything like that. It was fun at first. It was like a tool. It was like a social lubricant. Yeah. It was fun. It wasn't anything bad. And then all of a sudden you wake up in the morning like, why, why the fuck am, am I getting sick or something? Like, yeah, yeah, what's going sure. on? And the yeah. next thing you know, it starts grabbing you. And everything changes. It stops being fun and, and then it's in control. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> man. Exactly. That's, that's definitely how I felt for the longest time, you know? Um, it came to a point where I wasn't even getting high anymore. I was just chasing something. Just to maintain, just not to be sick all day. Yeah. You, you, no matter what you did, it was never the way it was before. It was just trying not to be sick uh, in the morning or just being able to go out and act normal. And you still can't go and act normal because even though you're not high, you're still blasted. Yeah. And everybody else sees it. You know. Exactly. I mean, my... I didn't have as much structure as you did as... Like, I feel... I'm not yeah. sure. I'm, I'm, only, I'm only talking on what I, I seen. But like with my situation, my my father was never around, so I kind of took advantage of my mother. You know, yeah. like um, she loved me, and and she couldn't see anything that I was doing wrong. With your situation, you had your father yeah. in the picture, and he was pretty tough on you. Uh, yeah. he, he was more lenient than my mother. My mother was controlling. My father kind of had faith in me, and I kind of <laughs> fucked that all up. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? But no, I was very fortunate in having uh, any time I ever messed up, that he was the first person always there. He, he never gave up on me even when I gave up on myself. I was very fortunate for that, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely had the structure, but uh, sometimes too much, too much of pushing something on somebody kind of sends them in the other direction, and that's kind of what happened with me. It's the more uh, my mother tried to control, the more I kind of rebelled and wanted to go the other way, and it just threw me off in a uh, completely wrong uh, tangent, you know, a different, different area. Yeah, yeah. So, so uh, what did your brother think about you when you were using? Like, uh, did you have, like, any... Um, any hot to hots with him? Did he, did well, he, uh, I'm like four years older than him, so he was kind of real young. He was kind of just getting uh, getting dragged through it till you could see that I hurt him. But I, I was his older brother. He didn't really know what to say. You know, he couldn't yeah. couldn't sit down and be like, "Hey, you know, you're messing up." Because I'd be like, "What do you know, kid? You're 
you're 12. You yeah, know what exactly, I mean? Yeah. So he was kind of helpless in this situation. And, uh, you know, now that we're older and stuff like that, we've got a better relationship. We've talked about it and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's it, it's good. It's better. But back then, he was just so young. He was he, he didn't know. Yeah. I'm man. 16. He's only he's only 12. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And and you weren't like he never was old enough to understand when you were using because you were able to stop it before it got to the point where he was old enough to understand, right? Or did he understand? No. He, he, somewhat. He understood, but he didn't, he didn't know what to do. He felt better. I saw his older brother. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't want me to do it, but he didn't, he didn't know how to help me. Yeah, you want to wipe his own ass. He was yeah, a kid. Yeah. Yeah, and then exactly. finally, when he was older, I was already so far gone and out of the house and you know going to jail or sleeping on people's couches and stuff like that. That there's not much he could really do yeah, until I man. finally started getting better. And I never really had a relationship with him because I was always out. You know the people when yeah, we finally gathered up and had yeah. one. It was already when I got better. So yeah, well that's good, man. That makes me that makes me happy that you got a good relationship with him now, because family's everything. If you don't have your family, man. Those are the only people that are going to back you up 110%. Oh, I'd always. still be out there right now if I wasn't, if I wasn't dead, if, if it wasn't for that, you know? Yeah, man. You know, my cousins, you know, my, you know, my cousins and Kenny and Corey, we were all freaking close and stuff, so if yeah, I didn't exactly. have all those, all those people, that would still be out. Yeah, man, Kenny and Corey are good people, man. I, I love those guys. Yeah. You know, I remember going to their house and, and smashing his dirt bike. Yeah. yeah. Or even the, uh, the the fundraisers for Kayla and stuff like that. So oh, we, all they, like, you know, we were kids, kids yeah. you know? Yeah. And so I remember, yeah, I remember taking around. little beatings from, uh, I forget who the fuck it was, but somebody beat me up. <laughs> we all used to beat each other up. Yeah. yeah, yeah inside always, the fundraiser, we'd all be wrestling yeah, and fighting man, and I remember throwing getting, basketballs at each other yeah, and stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, but I remember that. That's funny you say that because I wouldn't, I wouldn't even remember that until you just said that. Yeah, we used to go to fundraisers all the time. When we were when we were kids, when we were like what, twelve, eleven, ten? Oh, probably even younger than that. Cause like, cousin Kayla was uh, the the figure skater. She yeah. Was, you know. Yeah. Skating and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. And um, my like my cousin Angus and his mother and and Kenny's mother were uh, really good friends. Yeah, they both worked for the, with the post office. Exactly. So that's how, like, we were really good friends. But uh, I wanted to touch base with um, cause I, while we were just talking in the kitchen, I didn't even realize that you did. Two eighteen month sentences. Yeah. So you want to touch base on a little bit of that and, and what I was like, yeah, so I was over freaking twenty dollars worth of heroin. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, I was a kid. They they thought they were doing me a favor, putting me on a suspended sentence. You know, oh, yeah. he's gonna get clean. He's gonna do better. My parents being naive, not having any uh, any um, experience with the the situation. You know, yeah, thinking yeah. it was gonna be easy. You know, I ended up screwing myself. But uh, you know, no nothing nothing crazy happened. Nothing really really to touch upon other you go and. Like I was saying, you you go and you're counting the seconds, the minutes, the hours, the days. The next thing you know, you're saying, what what month is it? Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly, you know, the, exactly. The comfortability is what kind of kicked into the gear, saying, do I want to do this? You know, go to go to jail and then come out, be home for a little bit, go back and do the same thing my whole entire life, or uh, should I start doing things a little bit differently? And that's kind of what kicked off into me uh, starting to make some changes. Obviously, it wasn't overnight. I messed up, made some mess ups. Uh, in the meantime, but of ultimately course. that's kind of what kicked it into gear. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's crazy how how like um, so similar each drug addiction is to one another. Like my drug addiction and your drug addiction, we're two different people, but it's so similar the the path that it takes us that it's kind of scary, you know. Because I was there, I I I was comfortable in prison because I knew everybody. It was it was safe i felt safe because any any time i was released from prison i was running amok i had nowhere to go like i had somewhere to go which was my mother's house but she was tough because she didn't want to see her son doing what i was doing you know and, and, and that's rough so i can totally understand where you're coming from man but uh two 18 month sentences in, in the house of correction still wouldn't even have done it for me at that point in time you know yeah. um it took it took my sister passing away and then me being able to reflect on all the stuff that I didn't get to, to, to speak with her about to make me really want to be like, you know what, I want to change my life for the better. And um, I get my strength through her, man, 110%. Like, it's, it's hard to explain, but I never felt the, the feelings that I did before, you know? Yeah. And now that I have kids... Like, I'll watch something on Facebook, bro, and I'll literally get teary-eyed and, and, and thinking about these things that happen to these kids, man. You know what I mean? And I never had that because I didn't have kids, so I couldn't relate to that. But now, 
it's totally different. Like, like I'm a softy, bro, 110%. Uh, uh, it's just nuts. Yeah, I, I feel you on that because uh, even now what we did was crazy, but now it's not even the same thing. Now they got all the fentanyl and the car fentanyl and shit. It's 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 a completely different world, and uh, yeah, that's definitely something that uh, that's always going through my mind because I got lucky. Yeah. You know, not every not everybody does. Like you were saying too, with uh, that not being enough for you, even though it all brings you through the same kind of roads and stuff, everybody has a different start, a different and then that makes them stop, you know what I mean? The addiction does the same thing to everybody, though, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. So what's, uh, what's the, some people, friggin', they get high for friggin' two months, have a bad experience, then never get high again, and then some people friggin' go 60 years before they finally friggin' get it, you know? It's, yeah. That's the thing that's different with all of it. And I think it's something that has to do with, like, their, their, their chemical, like, not, well, it, it yeah, wouldn't be a chemical. Yeah, the brain chemistry. Yeah, exactly, the brain chemistry, because some people have an addictive personality. Some people can drink a couple beers and then stop. I, I drink the one beer. Analogy. I have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Some people are more allergic to something else. I can eat peanut butter; it might kill somebody else. I can drink one beer and then not have to kill the whole case, but yeah. somebody else might, you know. Yeah, and, and I can't drink one beer. It's just, it's just not a possibility yeah. because I am itching for another one. As soon as I drink that first one, I have to get shit faced, and, yeah. and it's just the way that it is. And I can finally sit back and notice that. And I no longer run to the package store anymore because I know that. Yeah. And in the beginning of this relationship with me and her, I would, every time I would get angry or aggravated, I would run down to the package store, drink a couple of beers and act like a fool. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then she would have to see my bad side. Yeah. And um, I never want anybody to see my bad side anymore because I feel like I'm a new and improved person. I work really hard to keep my my ducks in a row to... to to give my family a, a good solid foundation, you know, mm-hmm. and um, I had I had a good solid foundation. My mother gave me a really good solid foundation, and um, my father gave me one too because he kind of taught me what I shouldn't be doing in life, you know. And and his heart to hearts really meant something to me, mm-hmm. you know. Even though it wasn't as many as I would have liked, it's not his fault. It's nobody's fault. It's our fault for doing the things that we do. You yeah, know? Regardless, we all have that same decision. We didn't have to do anything. Certain things make it easier for us to, to do, justify what we do. So it's definitely the best at that, uh, justifying why I was doing this or justify why I was doing that. But at the end of the day, it's like uh, drinking poison and hoping somebody else dies. You're only hurting yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah, that's a good <laughs> way to put it, man. I never thought of it like that. And, and that's so true because, like, we justify these things but in all actuality, the only person we're hurting is ourselves. Yeah, you, yeah, know? Well, you were an asshole to me, so I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. I'm going to yeah, show yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. That's what I used to yeah. do every time. It, it, yeah, you that's, know? And that's then I'm nuts. pissed off at you because you pissed me off, but then I'm the one that goes to jail or I'm the one that ends up on probation or yeah. I'm the one that spends all my money. It was that I never hurt the other people. I mean, maybe, you know, in the short run, you know, emotionally or something, but I always had drastic <laughs> consequences of yeah. my own life more yeah. than I was ever trying to do it to somebody else, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely, man. That's... It also took me a very long time to to realize, and uh, even now when I get angry, I don't think about it, and then I take a step back, and I'm like, "What if?" <laughs> there I go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> well, what you have know? you what have you noticed from not having kids to now having kids that that like the anger and aggression and, and things that you used to have a trigger for. Like, what, what has the kids done for you to, to, to change that? Well, I've gotten more patient and less patient in different yeah, different yeah. scenarios at the same times. But the things that aggravate me the most is, you, it's like when my father, I imagine, was trying to talk to me. He said, you can't do this. What's the matter? What are you thinking? Because he knew better. And I was like, what the hell do you know? You're an old guy. You don't go screw yourself. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, and now yeah. it happens to me. I'm like, I'm, I'm my father. What the yeah, hell's going on? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. then now it makes me realize what he went through, and I'm like, I was such an ass. Yeah. So that it opens my eyes that way. Uh, I still gotta learn to be more patient because I I forget what it's like to be uh, a teenager sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Until, until I calm down, but you know. Uh, that's, many that's things, right. Patience, impatient. I see when I start getting angry for, for things I shouldn't be so mad about, like uh, jumping the gun, because now I know better. But I yeah. forget that I had to go do all that shit to know better. Yeah, you, you, so. you're 100% right. And I think the complex that we have is because we've been there. So we get so, like, um, like, um, we kind of like... We see the flag, so we jump the gun is what it, I do. And that's exactly you know? what it is. Like, we already know. We can foresee what's going to happen, so yeah. we're trying to stop that. But the way that we we say it might come off bitter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And, and, and they, take it, they take it the wrong way. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're just trying to help. We're not trying to hurt. You yeah. know? And... and 
Hey, man. No, know. but I would have never learned those lessons if I didn't do the stupid shit that, that we did. Because, you know, you could tell me and I can learn from your example, but it's always going to be inside you. You know, the life, life's the best friggin' teacher because you're only going to get kicked in the ass so many times before you say, hey, I'm not going to turn my back on this, you yeah, know, because I'm going to get kicked in the ass. Or you die and then you don't get no more chances, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like I was saying, I'm glad I, I got a lot of these experiences out of the way when I was young because a lot of the people you see... You go to jail or, 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 or detox or something like that. They're like, oh, yeah, I didn't get high until I was 35 or 40. Lost my house, my kids, and everything. Yeah. When I was getting in trouble, I didn't have shit. I had a PlayStation yeah, and exactly. a dog. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and now the consequences that I would go through today if I was doing those things would be... The, Ten times worse. And you like know? you said, uh, the PlayStation wasn't nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was about to pawn it in two days before. Now all of a sudden I'm worried about the video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You know, you know, you know? Like a thing was going to the pawn shop yeah. in a minute anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the insanity of it, you know. <laughs> I literally took everything out of my house that was that had value and brought it to the pawn shop because that was a quick hustle. And any hustle that was possible it was getting done you know what i mean and it comes to a point where you get so ingenuitive with the things around you that you figure out ways to get your money and it's not the best way to do things but you justify it and once you justify it for so long it just comes natural and you feel like it's okay to be doing these things and uh i um justified all sorts of crazy stuff from stealing to to to, to robbing drug dealers to Anything that was going to get my money, it was justified. Yeah, and even the things you can't justify in your head is just another reason to bury it down deep and go get high again. Because now yeah. you can't even look at yourself. It's not you to get high again because I'm a douchebag. I can't believe I did that. I better go fucking yeah, score because, again. Yeah, you know? because then you forget all about what yeah. you just did. Yeah, you know, and um, yeah, a very perpetual cycle is just. Yeah, it is. It really is. For sure. So um, you were telling me about the the the. The club life, and I, rem- I, I remember you you doing a lot of that club life, and, and um, you want to touch on that a little bit? No. The, the the heroin, what I've come to realize is just a symptom of the things that were bothering me, and then when I finally got away with that, I didn't really help any of the, the reasons that was making me do it in the first place, and go and start, you know, making money and doing this, that, and the third, I just traded my addiction from the, the, the heroin to, to, to money and and women and this and that. Yeah, the only yeah. thing is, is when I got to a point with the heroin that I was sick and I was sick of it, it hurt me. Yeah. And then when it was time to walk away from that, it was, I could find less reasons in my mind than in my reasoning at the time than I could to walk away from that stuff, you know? Yeah. So, and that you know. caused a whole other series of problems because I was clean for years, you know, for five, almost six years. Yeah. I'm living dirty, so I'm not really living any different than I was when I was on the drugs other than I'm not, you know, puking my brains out in the morning or having the skin crawlies and shit. Wow, man, that's... So, uh, that, that was kind of harder in itself because you, it, 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 I was always like, if I have this much money, my problems will go away. I always thought money or, or another person or something else was what was going to fix me when really it didn't. It was just masking it like the dope was. Yeah, exactly. Or, or like the drink it was. And then finally, the last time that I had relapsed, when everything all fell out, I was just left with the same thing I was before when I got clean the last time. Yeah, man. And so this time is when I really started working on myself and doing... Uh, the steps and stuff. I'm not an NA or an AA bump of what the 12 steps really did help me look at myself and learn about myself and why I'm doing the things that I did and come face to face with it. You know, um, learning about the effect that every, all the chemicals and shit was having on my brain and uh, yeah. why I was doing the things that I was doing. Because, uh, you know, you start getting high when you were when you're our age, you know, 15 years old, 14 years old. You get clean, you're, you're right back to square one. I'm a 20 year old man that's 14 years old in the head because I got, I got no coping mechanisms. Ooh, I got no nothing. That's, that's, that's a jewel, right? And there. that uh, that was that's the hottest pot. So now I'm a grown ass man, but I'm thinking like a freaking 14 year old brat. Wow, I and never that, that was like the that. longest was catching up uh, mentally because yeah. no matter how long I could have stood away from, from the dope for the rest of my life, I never worked on myself and I was just the same person. Yeah, miserable, just, just not masking yeah, it. Yeah, just in different forms. So that's I mean? also kind of a miserable existence in itself. So yeah, I'm not on drugs, but I'm still miserable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I've had uh, tons of money and been unhappy, and I've had $50 in my bank account, and whistling and happy and loving a friggin' life, Yeah, you know? yeah, man. So the only it's thing so that's going to fix yourself is you, and the only thing that's yeah. going to help yourself is you. Yeah. So. I mean, that's that's definitely true, man. Like, money doesn't money doesn't fix anything. Money makes uh, uh, I mean, it would worse. fix about 90% of my problems, but nothing that's important. Nothing yeah. eternally. You know, you yeah. don't have to worry about bills. It takes weight off your shoulders, but it don't fix yeah, nothing. Yeah, no, nothing. It's like you have a million dollars in the bank, and then you see people killing themselves with drugs that have a billion dollars, you know? Yeah, like, man. It's, it, it's nuts. I'd, ra- I'd rather have no money and peace of mind than a billion dollars and, and, and killing myself, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. But, like, um... 
like what you're doing right now is 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 great and, and people that that watch this are gonna see that you know we did have it tough but we do recover you know what I mean and we realized what we were doing and we were able to fix it and that's the biggest issue because if you can't get to that underlying issue nothing is ever gonna get fixed and you said it uh, absolutely perfectly and it's like a band-aid on a shotgun wound yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you know what I mean it just yeah. doesn't work man it doesn't it doesn't um, I mean there's there's a lot of things that we can talk about like uh, if you want to run down that story real quick of, of what happened that night um, with the whole car situation I mean that's how <laughs> I remembered it I don't know if I was spot on but it could have been a little different um, well, that pretty much started off with friggin' Xbox. They were meeting that friggin' Puerto Rican kid and driving to Connecticut to go get all those drugs, remember? So what, no, he, that, the kid that stole my PlayStation? No, 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 no. I was uh, uh, I was living in the Grove at the time, and I was talking to uh, a kid on, from Connecticut on the internet, so I went and I bought all I that friggin' that. dope. remember yes, that, yes. And when I got the dope, and then it ended up being way more than what we thought it was because yes. their, their lingo was different, you know what I mean? Yeah. So then we started friggin' partying and friggin'... Yeah. Smoking and we ran out of shit and the freaking black kid downstairs was like, oh, I ain't getting much shit, man. We're just gonna go up the road. And I'm like, I'm not driving anywhere. I'm fucked up, dude. Yeah, yeah. take the keys. <laughs> go. Yeah, 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 We're exactly. sitting there. An hour goes by. Two hours, four hours go by. Jeez. Shane, I don't think he's coming back, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I don't think he is either. No. So now we're all freaking whacked out. And I'm like, I got a fucking report it's stolen, man. My father's gonna kill me. <laughs> Sorry, dad. <laughs> Yo, the so cops funny. come in the middle of the night. Friggin', we're all banged out. He's like, "Oh yeah, what happened? Yeah, I don't know. I parked my car at the gas station. It was gone when I came out." Yeah, yeah sure, kid. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll we'll look for it. We'll get back to you. But it was so funny the way that you like because I was more worried than you were. You were just you were pro, you were procrastinating. You were oh, like, I was high yeah. as shit. Yeah, you were high. I, didn't you care. Did. I was high. I wasn't home. I was high. I was freaking happy as a pig and shit. Yeah. And so freaking, I was like, yeah, my dad might kick my ass. Because <laughs> it wasn't your car, right? No, it was, but he just got it for me. I was supposed to be paying him back, and I'm not paying him back. <laughs> I freaking just went to Connecticut and spent all my money on dope. <laughs> I don't get no money for this. So I go, yeah, he might, he, might, he might whip my ass for this one. So what happened with, with that situation? Oh, well, they found the car three weeks later in front of a project in Boston with about nine tickets on it because of the freaking uh, the street sleeping days. It was on the wrong side. <laughs> I call him up and I go, hey, uh, the cop was stolen. I haven't reported. Do I got to pay these tickets? He's like, yeah, if I can pay the tickets. So I got stuck paying a whole bunch of money in tickets. Wow. Well, my father covered me again. I had to pay him back. I was in debt for that guy forever. Yeah. He, he, <laughs> All this shit he saved my ass with. Yeah, but no. you're, you're, you're paying him back every day by, <laughs> by doing what you do on a daily basis, going to work, taking care of your kids. He's, he's probably a, a very proud grandfather. No, yeah, he's one of my best friends, man. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's pretty cool, man. That's That's... That, that's what it is, you know. You, it's all about the kids now, man. No, yeah, you know, sure. now, now that you got the kids, it's yeah. Nobody gives a shit about you anymore. Where's the baby? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 hi, yeah. You what about it? me? <laughs> what, is, what the hell? <laughs> but yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, everybody wants to see the babies. Yeah, I don't blame him. He's a cute little bastard. <laughs> yeah, he is. He is, and it's awesome. It, it really is because I I get on my Facebook and it's so cool seeing you and Josh and, and, and all these people that and if you had a million dollars back in the day you had to bet that we'd be like this right now <laughs> or we'd be in jail what would you I would have put the million dollars on, on the, the, the other that I would be yeah. no good yeah. I wouldn't have even bet on myself yeah, and yeah would you, me you Josh and all that shit everybody I see that's doing good now it's it's crazy it's, it's, because we were the worst yeah out of everybody it. it was me you and him that yeah. were absolutely it, 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 unfixable it, that's absolutely true we were the ones that everybody thought was hopeless and never gonna go nowhere yeah, and now exactly, we're uh, man. other people that used to freaking talk shit about me have been down to me and other people that are going through it now yep which it, is also a it, crazy it, thing you know it's insane because a lot of the people that didn't do drugs when we were doing it are now doing it and are reaching out and are being like wow bro i didn't realize how crazy this shit is yeah and I have a lot of people that reach out to me. Not as many as I would like. I, I, but uh, there's a lot of people that, that uh, are scared to talk about it because they don't want to open up this demon. They, they're justifying it still. You know what I mean? That's why I'm trying to bring awareness to this whole situation. Well, growing up, I was just taught just, you know, muscle it down and shut the hell up, you know? Yeah. I, I, they're, they're talking like this or, or, or talking at a meeting or anything like that it was so foreign to me at some point in time you couldn't have paid me a million dollars to do it. Yeah. Because it's hard. It's a pride thing. Oh, I'm a man. man, I don't have to talk to another man about this, or I don't gotta talk to another human being about this. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah, you're just gonna toughen up. That's out. not the way it works. Yeah, man, it, it, it's very true, and it, it's cool that you can see that because not everybody sees it like that. You know, we, we grew up going to prison 
and then once you get into prison, the politics completely take over your whole life. Because now you look at rats, skinners, fucking all that stuff is a no no now. So now you bring that out on the street and you're acting like a uh, like a renegade, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're running around like, oh he's a rat, oh he's a snitch, ah, screw this guy, screw that guy. You know what I mean? But in all actuality, you're just digging yourself deeper and deeper because it's not helping anything. It's no. making things worse because now you have this mentality of a hardened criminal when that's not what you want to be. It's not the way it is over there. It's a different world. Yeah. That's the thing, too. You, 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 human beings are very resilient. They freaking will survive in just about any environment you put them in. And yeah. once, once you get used to a certain thing, that's, that's what you're used to. Yeah, you know, yeah. if you're used to living in Alaska or in the snow all the time and go to Florida, it's going to take you a long time to acclimate to, to that. You know, mm -hmm. the same thing with where you live and who you're around and what the hell you do. Yeah, for sure. You know? I mean, you got you got you got um, a head start with that beard, man. Living in Alaska, bro. <laughs> I, I think uh, that'll keep you warm for the fucking. I ain't saying it. Was, it was twelve degrees out today. I'm not doing it, man. Yeah, I know, man. It <laughs> see, was cold. You it see was my cold. face in April, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel I I literally feel like you just sh you just did a haircut, didn't you? No, I shaved this this morning. <laughs> yeah, no, I cut the hair a couple of years ago. I ended up donating it. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And my cousin Angus did the same thing. He, he cut his hair off. Yeah, that's how I saw it. it was getting bigger. I saw him working on a bike a while ago. Yeah. yeah. I don't see him as much as I used to anymore. There's all the working and shit. Everybody yeah. Everybody goes well, up and doing their own thing, you know? Yeah, that's what it is, man. Once you got once you got a kid and you establish yourself a family, it's, you know, you don't, you don't see the people that you used to see because... Like that was my whole life. I couldn't be by myself. I yeah. always had to be with somebody. I always had to be a have have a running running partner. Yeah, hanging out and doing that stuff was my job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that you was know my what job. I mean? And I could not sit with myself alone. Like I just couldn't. It was something that I could not do. I always needed somebody to be with because I always kind of leaned on them and they leaned on me to to figure out a way that we were gonna start the day and get something. You know. So scheming. Yeah, scheming, man. It's it's really it's it's a real <laughs> thing. It's a real thing in this world we live in. Yeah, but uh, you got any um, you got any other anything else that you wanna uh, brush up on? No, right up on the top of my head, right this second. I'm trying yeah. to think. Yeah, well, um, give me one second. 